Hello everyone, welcome to the Ginger Snap Series Month of Halloween, where I'll be discussing the Halloween franchise. I'm your host, Stephen Harold, and in today's episode, we will be discussing Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, which was released on October 22nd, 1982, 40 years ago today, and was written and directed by Tommy Lee Wallace. After Michael Myers met his fiery demise at the end of Halloween 2, John Carpenter and Deborah Hill wanted to put the series in an anthology type of way, where every single year on Halloween, they will release a new Halloween-themed movie with different tales, different stories, and pretty much all these different stories would also spawn their own sequels. And Halloween 3 was the first experiment into that. After, you know, killing off Michael Myers in Halloween 2, the series didn't think they needed Michael Myers anymore. So that's why they went with the Halloween 3 route that they did. And sadly, there is a reason why there was never a sequel for Season of the Witch. And this is the episode where I talk about that. So let's get into Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. For the story, it's very vague, actually. It's about a mask-making company, Silver Shamrock Novelties, which makes a bunch of masks, especially... The Big Three, the Halloween Three, which they employ to all the kids around the world to make sure they buy these masks and make sure they watch the special giveaway at nine. Not knowing that the special giveaway just happens to be a sacrifice that happened in the Celtic worlds of Ireland back in many, many, many millenniums. And pretty much this guy wanted to bring Halloween back to its sacrificial origins. In the crosshairs of this all, a doctor and a, a daughter of a deceased father are investigating why her father had died. And the whole thing has gotten them all weirded out. Why was this guy wearing, uh, carrying a mask and saying they're going to kill us all that lead them to Santa Mira to understand what is going on with Silver Shamrock novelties? For the story, it's one of those movies where a lot of people over time have appreciated this film as one of the best Halloween type films to watch. And for the story itself, it almost acts like it was a great addition to any type of movie that you'd love to watch on the Halloween season. So in this movie, our protagonist is not Dr. Loomis because like I said in Halloween 2, he died as well with Michael. It's actually Dr. Daniel Chalice, played by Tom Atkins. And I will say, um, for a doctor, he's not much of a doctor in this movie. I mean, we see him in the scene where he's at the hospital and, you know, he's helping the guy out, Mr. Cambridge. But as a doctor, he's not portrayed that well. Uh, this doctor seems more like, you know, more interested in getting laid and drinking more. Um, I, I, I just love Tom Atkins in this movie. He is the reason that everyone also watches it at the same time as all the other reasons I'll be bringing up in this movie. But Tom Atkins, this is like one of those roles that he's definitely known for. And I love the fact that a lot of people, when they approach him in conventions, they either talk about, you know, Creep Show, they either talk about Night of the Creeps, or they talk about Halloween 3. And hell, you gotta remember, he also was in The Fog where he had sex with Jamie Lee Curtis's character. This guy just happened to be like probably the biggest pimp in the 80s when it came to horror movies. I just love something about Tom Atkins. I really want to meet him so bad. There's also another character in this movie, Ellie Crimbridge, who, uh, like I said, is the daughter of the father who died in the beginning of the movie. Uh, she is very concerned as to why someone was able to, uh, wanted to kill her father. And she goes off with Dr. Chalice to try and, solve this mystery it's kind of like a very mystery oriented type of film but the choices that they made for her character where she is you know a grieving daughter who lost her father and is just sleeping with this guy who's like twice her age i don't know what it is but uh she does very well with the role that she is in in this movie you know she plays someone who is very vulnerable but also has some strengths she obviously goes for what she's after. She always gets what she wants. Except at the end, where, of course, as we all know, if you all seen this movie, she turns out to be an android at the end of the movie, which I do believe 
she was turned into an android. And um, yeah, it, it was nice to see her character in some type of uh, different damsel in distress. I mean, I, I love the fact that she actually wanted to solve this, this mystery. She wanted to do this. It wasn't always the whole, she's running away from something. She was running towards it. And I actually love her character for that. Now, the big bad of this movie is not Michael Myers. It's actually Connell Cochran, played by the late, great Daniel Hurley. Now, again, Deborah Hill and John Carpenter really wanted to cast someone with veteran experience when it came to this type of film. And Daniel Hurley was probably the best casting choice they could have went for, especially when telling the story. It's about a guy who essentially is a gag artist, and then he makes these Halloween masks. But going back to the sacrificial origins of Samhain, and him having that Celtic origin, being an Irish actor, worked for the film. And there's something about Dan O'Hurley in this role, is he gave off this warmth, like you could trust this guy. Like he, he seems like, even like the town of Santa Mira, just like worshipped him but he also had this dark side to him and when he showed it it was very fucking scary to see it and just to see his performance in this movie it's definitely one of the highlights of all the other performances we've seen in the halloween franchise and there's a reason why a lot of people actually really like connell cochran for the gore and the blood in this movie, there's not so much of it. Uh, there is two kills in particular that are very gory. Well, actually three in, in general. One of the kills, obviously, is a guy getting his head ripped off by an android who happens to be called the assassin in the credits, which was played by Dick Warlock, who played Michael Myers in Halloween 2. And then uh, the other gruesome death is what is called a misfire, where this one girl who shows up to the, the hotel as well, to Santa Mira, she wants to return a mask because it broke, the chip fell off. And then she fucks around with this, this uh, tag because there's some sort of mechanical device inside of it. And it beams a, this thing at her where her face gets all fucked up and like a bug crawls out of it. And you're thinking to yourself, what the fuck is going on with this? And then, of course, probably one of the most ambitious at the time kills is Little Buddy who is killed. A little kid is killed in this movie. He is killed by watching the commercial that is the big giveaway at nine, while the the uh, pin at the back of all the masks activates after watching this commercial. And, you know, he has bugs coming out of his head. He's got snakes and all that shit. It's gnarly as fuck. And as for that, that's like the big three, funny enough, eh? kills of the movie where the other kills are kind of like you know they're whatever kills but other than that when it comes to the gore and the special effects and all the kills they are you know they're actually not bad this movie's top popularity that made this movie so famous obviously is the halloween three masks the big three as they call it um these masks obviously are synonymous with the halloween franchise especially recently with the new trilogy Halloween 2018, Halloween Kills, being a part of those movies. Um, now, the masks, as we all know, the, the skull mask was originally owned by Don Post, and then the witch, the Hagatha mask, was also created by Don Post, but also they had to have a pumpkin mask, which was the only mask made for the movie. So if you guys ever notice your Halloween 3 masks, you'll notice that the pumpkin has the silver shamrock pin and also a painted shamrock on the mask. So I guess it was kind of a way to distinguish which one was made for the movie and the other two were not just made for the movie. They were just outright used for the film. And the over the years now, these masks have grown in such popularity. And as you guys can see, I don't have the witch mask. I just have the skull and the pumpkin. Um, last year, they did have the witch mask and I was like, ah, you know, I won't buy it yet. I'll just wait till next year. And sadly, they don't have it this year. So... Of course, as we all know, when it comes to these masks, everyone always has their favorites. But if you're a big lover of Halloween 3, you have to have all three. And trust me, I'll get all three. Just wait. The other thing that's also synonymous with this movie is obviously the Silver Shamrock Jingle. We all know it. 
Happy, happy Halloween, 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 happy, happy Halloween, Silver Shamrock. Yeah, it's the one song that pretty much when it came out, every single time someone heard it, it got stuck in their fucking head. So before Willie's Wonderland's It's Your Birthday and the Chucky, rem the Child's Play remakes, uh, I Am Your Buddy, this was the song that originally did what it did. Now, of course, as we all know, when it comes to the movie and its jingle, we all know it's London Bridge is Falling Down because, you know, it was a public domain song. So to hear that song even after 40 years still being played today is very unique. And it's, it's actually one of the songs I end up using as a ringtone or an alarm for my phone around the Halloween season. So the climax of this movie actually is a very ambiguous one. Uh, after Dr. Chalice has run out, he's, he's killed the android Ellie. He has gotten out of the factory, caused it to go on fire. He tries to get a hold of the TV program channels to turn off all the uh, commercials for the Silver Shamrock masks um, before all these kids die throughout the whole entire world. He manages to get the two channels to uh, take the, air, the commercial off the air. But then the third channel, which, you know, I guess 1980, I guess there was only three fucking channels. Um, we don't know if they were able to get that commercial off the air on the third channel. We don't know. It leaves it ambiguous. Did Dr. Chalice manage to save all the kids throughout the whole entire world or did they all die? We don't know. It's always up to the viewer to say what happened. Like, what was the end result? We don't know. And I think the movie had a lot of balls to do such a thing. And I praise this movie for its ending. Now, as you guys can tell, um, there is this one thing that has happened why there is a reason we don't see another Halloween 3 Season of the Witch type of movie. There was no other sequel after this. Why? Because back in 1982, when people saw this movie, they had one question throughout the whole time. Where's Michael Myers? They realized Michael Myers was not in this movie and they didn't grasp the concept of an anthology. And they hated this movie. This movie became reviled. That's why in Halloween 4, they simply titled it The Return of Michael Myers. And then we had stuck with Michael Myers ever since. But it's funny when I actually watched the trailer for Halloween 3 after watching it on the 4K. And um, realizing, how did people not notice that Michael was not in this movie after watching the trailer? Did you guys just not see the trailer at all? Or did you all think like, oh, they're just keeping Michael's secret. Don't worry. And then that was your, like the trailer straight up gives you the hint that Michael's not even in this fucking movie. It's a totally different story. If it was a Michael Myers movie, like Halloween and Halloween 2, even those trailers showed Michael in those fucking trailers. Halloween 3 doesn't. So why the hell did everyone not notice that Michael was not in this movie is beyond me. But this movie has had its reputation tarnished because of it. And that's, like I said, that's the reason why we never got a Season of the Witch sequel. And for some people, you know, it's for the best. But to others, you know, they just wish they had that sequel come out to see what else could have been done. For all the people out there who absolutely don't like this movie, I understand why you don't like it. And hey, it's your opinion. But for the people who do love this movie, it's nice to finally see that this film finally got the respect it deserved. The reputation that it got back in 1982 onward was just misunderstood. Like I said, this film was misunderstood. And as you guys can see with me loving Halloween 3, it's because of the fact that when I finally saw it in 2012 on the 30th anniversary... I already knew that Michael Myers wasn't even in the movie. So I was like, well, let's watch it. Cause it's like, how bad could it actually be? And when I watched it, I couldn't believe how much I actually enjoyed it. It's definitely one of the Halloween films. I tend to watch a lot more in the franchise than all the other ones. And for Halloween three, like th this, the, the magnitude of how popular this movie became like my friend, Chris loves this movie too. He ended up getting me the VHS for this, which 
Again, thank you, Chris, for that, because I fucking really love that. Um, Halloween 3, it's still going to go down in history as one of the most misunderstood horror movies, misunderstood Halloween films in the franchise. And for the cult classic status it has, I think it's very much earned that this movie is beloved. But if you don't love the movie, I understand why. So, for my rating, I'm going to give Halloween 3 Season of the Witch an 8.5 out of 10. So tell me guys, what do you think of Halloween 3 Season of the Witch? Is it one of the films that you absolutely appreciate in the franchise, or is it a film you still just don't appreciate at all? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you also hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more spooky content. And don't forget to hit that bell notification when you want to get notified about every other video that comes out this month. Anyways guys, that's it for me. This has been the Ginger Snaps here's Month of Horroween. I am Stephen Harold, and remember, tune in at 9 for the special giveaway. Take care.